Good evening. Thank Rimworld for more background music tonight. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Again, I should really gather my thoughts before just starting to record these things. <laughs> I just set it up, hit record, and hope something's gonna come of that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, not much new today. Not really anything new. Uh, I think I've settled into a bit of a routine between uh, Hades and Rimworld. I'm gonna try and do at least two runs on Hades a day because both I did two today and they were both productive. Um, you know, and as long as I can do that every day, I'll feel like I'm pushing ahead. And I'm still hopelessly addicted to Rimworld again. Um, it's been a ride. <laughs> I really should be, like, outlining everything that happens, because, I mean, RimWorld sells itself as a story simulator, as much as it is a game. Um, boy, it's been a ride today. I lost several colonists to infection, because early game RimWorld. Um, one of which happened to be married to another one, and that poor girl has not been doing good today. Uh, <laughs> uh, we took in, like, four random people. We took in three random people late last night that went on into the morning. One joined and the rest left. We took in four more, and they all four revolted, and I was able to capture one of them, but um, I lost a colonist in the process, I think, so I made damn sure he stayed around, um, and he's basically being punished for just doing grunt work. Um, <laughs> granted, that's always really good for, uh, but he is basically just here to mine, haul, and clean, and that's what he gets for betraying me. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you folks. If you break into my house and then try to kill my family, I will require you to do manual labor for me for the foreseeable future. <laughs> so don't do that. Last night, after I recorded, I had uh, I saved a woman who was being chased by three mad guinea pigs. Uh, she showed up, ate three meals, and then died of a heart attack. <laughs> it was like, all right. Had another one join today, just out of nowhere, just wandered in and was like, "Hey, I'm here now." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And then, like, within half an hour, got eaten by a cougar. <laughs> because I'm struggling right now, and struggling means overhunting, and overhunting means predators start chasing your colonists. So that's been fun. I do have a self-tamed cougar, though, and a ward, which is somewhere between a bull and a dog, I think. Um... been crazy, yo. Been absolutely crazy. <laughs> Not really much else to report. <sighs> um, no, no grand thoughts. Watched the dog again today. I've decided to just let my hair grow again, which you've probably noticed by now. It's so soft. I can't remember if it usually was at this length or if it has to do with the fact that, you know, even while keeping it shaved, I still like shampooed and conditioned it, sort of, and like kept my scalp real soft because one, it felt nice, and two, I basically, I shaved 
in the shower, so I was basically using conditioner as shaving cream. Um, and that seems to have paid off because my scalp and the hair I'm growing so far is just so nice and soft. Still working on, like, I do my beard too, uh, regularly, and it goes back and forth. Um, but yeah, that's a pro tip that I didn't consider until a couple, uh, about like a year and a half ago. Pro tip, beard growers, treat it like your regular hair. Seriously, just treat it like it's on your head. Because it is. Even though it's a different type of hair, it prefer, it likes the same treatment. Just wash good, get in there really good. Because it's still like it's not like it's not like my hair, but it's much softer than it was originally. Like originally it was really coarse. Um, but if you just get in there and treat it like you know, the hair on your head, wash it really good, get in there and really get in there and really kind of massage less even like almost scratch your face um, because the more you rub an area the, the better the blood flow is to it and the better the blood flow the healthier the hair um, and condition it let it set let it soak that stuff in you know treat it right it'll treat you right and mine is very nice even though it gets a little out of hand sometimes and by that I mean this part specifically is I'm not sure if it's more curly than the rest of it, or if it's just curling in a more obvious direction, because it kind of curls out like that, and it's just so, but like, so I keep, I'm keeping that trim down. This is probably the longest I've kept it. Like, I've, I always keep, but like, usually it's like half an inch or something like that. I mean, it's whatever, uh... Whatever 12 is on my my beard trimmer um, is where I usually keep it. About half this length, I think. And I've got going on about about that length of you know about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches. I'm digging it. I really am. I can like get a good hold of it. <laughs> I've been kind to it. I've been I have been rough with my beard in the past. One of my uh, anxious tendencies for a while was to twirl it like this, and I picked this up when I was visiting Germany as a nervous habit. And uh, basically, I would end up twirling it and rubbing like patches of my face raw. And I remember I was getting so frustrated with myself for doing it that um, this is when I was working at Ellis's. I'd grab a pair of scissors and just, I'd chop wildly. Like, if I got my fingers on it, sort of doing like that, I cut it off. I was, like, punishing myself so I'd stop doing it. And it worked. Um, and at the time, it was just long enough for me to grab. So, cutting patches out of it like that wasn't very noticeable. Um, yeah, that was a hard habit to quit. I'm glad I did the my face no longer hurts at all times. <laughs> like seriously, I would do it to the point where it would like, I'd, I'd be doing it and I'm like, this hurts, and I'd keep doing it because anxiety habits are like that. <sighs> but anyway, I'm going to get back to the world because I want to. And I'll uh, catch you all tomorrow.